good morning and a very warm welcome to you all to this service from St Peter and St Paul Old Brampton. St Lawrence, Barlow and the local ecumenical partnership at Lounsley Green. This is the fourth Sunday after Trinity. The hymns today illustrate the God of love who we should turn to in times of joy or sorrow, when we are living life to the full or when we are weary and heavy laden. Sometimes when we are tired, we turn to God for rest and to hear what he says. So let us sing our first hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. today's service I will be using the service of the word from St Peter and St Paul which is also included in this week's pew sheet. I will say the words for the minister and I will also say all the responses. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Lord, open our lips so we can shout your praises. Lord, open our eyes so we can see your wondrous works. Lord, open our ears so we can hear your call. Lord, open our hearts so we can live a life of love. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From chaos you created the world, and in love you made us in your image. By your death and resurrection you have brought us to new life. May the light of Christ shine in our hearts as we offer you our thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We come together in the name of Christ to offer praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world 
and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may be renewed for the service of God. We tend to act differently when we are tired, exhausted or weary, when we are lost, pressurised or stressed and lack energy, focus and direction, we can panic and say and do things that we would not normally say or do. So we turn to God to say that we are sorry for these times and sorry when we fall short of his commandments. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And our words of the absolution. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say the words of praise. Blessed is the Lord, who has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore our hearts dance for joy, and we shall praise the Lord. Members from our three churches will read from Zechariah and Romans. Following the readings, the Reverend Janet Quick will read the Gospel from St Matthew, and then share her words of wisdom in the sermon. A reading from Psalm 145, verses 8 to 15. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts, and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall, and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. Here ends the reading. Start again. Romans chapter 7 verses 15 to 25. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, 
but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of, of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh I am a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Our reading for this Sunday is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to, eat, to others, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble, gentle, uh, gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our reading, as I just read from Matthew's Gospel today, falls into two neat halves. In the first half, we hear Jesus comments on the ways of the restless world. He says, to what shall I compare this generation? And he goes on to characterise the standard of his times as being never satisfied, always sceptical, like children sitting in the marketplace making demands that they're keen to see never materialise. Suspicious resentment, fault-finding, bogus standards. The ascetic John, the baptizer, came and, Jesus says, you said he was off his head. The son of man comes, Jesus continues, referring to himself, and you say he's a drunkard, eats too much and consorts with sinners those not nice to know. When will you be satisfied? The people in authority he is talking about and to. This burst of Jesus, because that's what it sounds like, follows Jesus being visited by some of John's disciples after John is thrown into prison. Are you the one we're waiting for, is John's disciples' question to Jesus. In other words, the bottom line of what the situation is, is identity. Real, truthful identity, not just what seems to be the case. It's about wisdom and truth. Wisdom, which Jesus tells us, is revealed or not revealed by action. Although these words, written in Greek, were penned over 2,000 years ago, for the sentiment they contained, they could have been written yesterday. In these troubled times, who isn't on the lookout for responsibility and integrity in action? This, in a national last couple of weeks, that's seen 
folk rushing to the seaside and parks in hot weather, behaving irresponsibly, leaving litter and setting alight some areas of countryside of outstanding beauty. Behaviours that said to us, we don't care. Wisdom is proved right by her actions or lack of wisdom by the opposite. And how much seems to hang on the perception of personal integrity and wisdom of our leaders? As pavement interviews where people are asked what they think about leaders in current situations, as these situations testify. All this shows us that we are very much, as is reflected in the words of Jesus, that we are very much entangled in the ways of the world. So how do we escape this entanglement, this making of hasty, ill-considered judgments of the world that do no good either to ourselves or others? The answer lies in the second half of our reading from Matthew today, where the world's so-called wisdom is consigned to what it rightfully is, an illusion. In its place, we have a revelation of simplicity, that God has, quote, hidden these things from the worldly wise and learned and revealed them to little children. The reference to little children, not so much perhaps implying six and seven year olds, but those including adults of a trusting nature. Jesus tells us that finding this way is a way out of world weariness, being weighed down by the matters of the moment. In fact, rest for our souls. God's kingdom the psalmist told us in the reading we heard earlier, is an ex uh, everlasting kingdom and, quote, a dominion that endures through generations. And so we are released, if we let ourselves open to be, from the tyranny of the moment. And that has to include all the awfulness that surrounds a pandemic. But as Paul, in his letter to the Romans, points out, this will involve the realisation that there is that within us that can work against, militate against, this way of release. That force against well-being, Paul labels as sin. Quote, what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. The evil I do is not what I do, the evil I do not what want to do, I keep on doing. In my inner being, he says, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work, E.B. Wells. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Paul is showing us a mind and a soul at its wit's end, but then... Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Many find Paul's theology, what he tells us about faith, a bit of a thorny, difficult path sometimes. But here he is dead clear. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's no good saying that from time to time we don't get dismayed that we don't get irritated or annoyed or disappointed or repulsed or deflated or frightened by what we see going around us and in the world. We do. It's no good saying that we don't get dismayed, irritated, disappointed and so on by what we ourselves do and think and how we behave from time to time. Because unless we're more saintly than St Paul, we do, and we should. But thanks be to God through Jesus our Lord. I sometimes like to tell um, the little uh, story about the tramp sitting in a church several times a week. He sits there gazing at a crucifix in front and high up uh, in the chancel. 
When the vicar approached him one day and asked him why he came, what he was getting out of coming so regularly and just sitting there, apparently, the tramp replied, well, you see, it's like this. I looks at him and he looks at me. A lesson for us all, I think. And so the passage from Romans shows us just how and why Jesus Christ is Saviour. The world may go on behaving like dissatisfied children, but we as Christians, together with all those who aspire to put goodness at the forefront of their lives, all these people have Jesus. On this Sunday, we celebrate the 72 years of existence of our National Health Service. That existence has, of course, special significance this pandemic year. This is a time in which we realise with gratitude the dedication and expertise of those in the medical profession and ancillary staff. Our topping has not been and is not a matter of empty duty, but heartfelt gratitude. In general, also perhaps, this is a period in which we appreciate others as never before. This is the antidote to the petulant calling and fault-finding alive as much today as in the time of Jesus. If we all appreciated those we know on a personal level much more and showed them our appreciation and gratitude, at a stroke, the world would become a better place. Amen. We proclaim our faith by saying the words of a Celtic creed. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descendeth into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I thought it would be appropriate to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Because when we need help and are heavy laden, we need to turn to Jesus in prayer. After the hymn, our prayers of intercession will be read by a member of one of our three churches. The prayers will be followed by the collect for today and the Lord's Prayer. So let us sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
loving God is here, attentive to our needs. Let us pray to him now. We pray for our churches and for all churches as they start to reopen. Guide our church leaders in the difficult decisions that lie ahead, working out how we can return to worshipping together while remaining safe. We thank God for the technology that has allowed us to continue to worship during this period of church closure. We offer thanks and praise for those who have kept our services going, especially Janet and Kate and Nick. God is all around us, not just within the walls of the church. Nevertheless, we look forward to being able to gather as a church community again and pray that this day will come soon. We pray that we will be able to proceed in a timely manner with the recruitment of our new vicar. Guide those involved in making this appointment decision. We pray that the person appointed will find joy and fulfilment in their new role. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all world leaders and their governments at this particularly challenging time. We pray that there will be a spirit of mutual support and cooperation in protecting all the world's people against the threat of the coronavirus. We pray that the research, medicines and vaccines that will help us return to more normal lives will be shared between nations. Help leaders and governments to learn from one another and to share experiences for the benefit of all. As our leaders navigate their way through the tricky path of lifting lockdown restrictions, help them to make the right decisions and to learn quickly from their mistakes. Support and guide the scientists who are advising governments and help us to follow their advice however difficult this may seem at times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose livelihoods have been impacted already by the pandemic and for those who fear loss of income in the future. We pray for all the children whose education has been disrupted and for young people emerging from further education into a world where it seems like opportunities will be much reduced. Help us to continue to support one another over the weeks and months ahead so that those who are affected will experience your love and will have hope for the future. We pray that all who carry heavy burdens, all who are weary and cry out for relief, will come to you and find peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are ill, whether in mind or body. We think of those who suffer and are unable to have the comfort of family around them. We pray for those who are worried about family members who they have been unable to visit. We pray for those whose treatment has been delayed or changed as a result of the virus, causing anxiety and prolonging pain. We thank God for the love and support provided by those who work in the health and care sectors and pray that those working on the front line will recover from the trauma of the last few months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have died over recent months and pray that their souls will rest in peace. We pray for all those who mourn. At a time when the number of deaths has become a daily statistic, help us to remember that for each death, there is a family suffering loss. We pray that you will help them bear their burden and bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for your gentleness and humility, which puts our pride and vanity to shame. Teach us to trust more and more in your truth. Help us to learn from the experiences of the last few months so that we can build a better world, a world where we care for and help one another a world where there is social justice and equal opportunity for all. A world where we find shelter for the homeless and one in which we value our environment and take steps to protect it. A world where we truly value and appreciate all the good things you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
and the collect for the fourth Sunday after Trinity. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that though being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. When we have the ability to see, we can see things clearly and can see and understand what is there and how to get to it. Our love and faith in God is something that we need to see clearly and see God's vision for now and the future. The vision that God is with us all the time and will be there even when we feel tired, weak or lost. So let us sing our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
to say the words of a dismissal together. Lord, surround us with your love as we go for this act of worship. Let lips that have sung your praise always speak for truth, and ears that have heard your word always listen to your will. Give us the grace to work for the coming of your kingdom here on earth. For the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's service and I hope you feel refreshed in body, mind and spirit and ready for whatever lies ahead of us in our lives. I wish to thank all those who have helped to make this service possible and I hope that you will all take care, keep safe and be well. As we come to the end of our service, let us save the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We are sent out in the name of the Lord. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.